Hi everyone, so this is the first, I guess the second video in the Python GDAL series where we're doing geospatial analysis in Python using GDAL. And today we're going to cover the basics of reading data from a raster. And throughout this series, I'm going to be using QGIS. Um, and the reason I'm going to use it is because, I as I explained in the first video, um, I can go to plugins and Python console and I have GDAL um, right within this console in QGIS, so it makes it really easy to use. And the second is that if I'm in QGIS doing the Python code here, I can also show you what's going on at the same time. And so we have the code and the visual, and it makes it really easy to switch back and forth instead of needing a second program. So if you want to follow along, it's really easy. Just install QGIS. I have a previous video that shows you how you can do that. Um, and you'll be good to go uh, just as I'm set up. Uh, if you want to install in a different way, check out the first video in this series, which is the introduction and the installation. And you can see how to install this for any Python interpreter and not just using QGIS. All right, so I'm going to get started. I'm going to just add in a DEM here, a digital elevation model. And this is a raster file. And this is a really small one, just for a small area that we can start to work with. So I just want to give you an idea of what we're looking at here when we're working with a DEM. Okay. So now I'm going to go back and go to, going to go to my plugins menu and open the Python console in QGIS. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import GDAL. And what I want to do today is I just want to read in um, this DEM and we're going to start to find out some information about it. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is I'm going to just do, um, we'll just call it file name. So our file name, this is in C. Colon temp dem dot tiff, and I'm going to save probably all of my rasters in the tiff format, so dot tif throughout this series. That's the format I prefer. Um, GDAL is going to be able to handle a lot of different formats um, as far as writing and reading, and we'll get into that as we go on. It's really easy to read in any format. Um, as far as writing formats, there are some extra steps you have to take even for tiffs, but we'll get into that as we move along. And so I'll just show you where this file store on my computer. So I'm in the temp folder on my C drive, and I have this dem.tiff right here. And so that is what I'm referencing here. Okay. And now I'm going to do ds. And so when I do ds, this is going to be a data set. This is going to be a raster data set. And I'm going to do gdal, oops, dot open. And I'm just going to give it the file name. So fn and that will open my file, okay? So now I'm gonna have this DS, which is a GDAL raster data set. And with DS, I can start to query some things. So let's actually do a GDAL dot data, oh, it's called a data set, I don't remember this. Anyway, we won't go at the moment. But so from here, um, I can do ds, let's do print, ds.rasterxsize, and comma ds.rasterySize. All right, so let's run this, and this should give us the number of columns first, the x size, the number of rows second, the y size. So let's click run here, and it prints it out. So you can see we have 42 columns and 45 rows. Okay, so that's how you can get that information. The other thing you might want is do print ds dot get projection. And so that will get the projection information. So let's click run here. Okay. And so what we have here is we have a, a oh, we might need to put parentheses on this. So it's returning an object and not text, which is fine. So let's go ahead and click run. Okay, and so now look at this. I'm going to put the parentheses on there because it's the actual information we want. So you can see that we have, um, this is the North American datum of 1983. It has the spheroid, the authority is the EPSG 7019. Um, for the... Uh, for the spheroid, it has the EPSG authorities for all these. It has the units in degrees. Um, it's in transverse Mercator, so it's UTM projection. 
and then let's come down here so our unit's going to be in meters our authority is the EPSG unit for that and here's our final projection which is EPSG 26911 which is going to be uh, UTM zone 11 north in the United States um, so there's where you get the protection information for this raster okay so the other thing I want to get is we can do print uh, ds dot get geo transform and we're going to use geo transforms a lot this is going to be a really important thing and I'm going to print this out and you'll see what it is so let's click run here and so here's our geo transform and so what we have here is the um, x coordinate of the top left corner of the DEM okay so that's the top left X this is the cell width so the X resolution this is the top left Y so that gives the top left corner those two coordinates and it continues down here and this is the Y resolution and so for north up DEM or north up rasters the Y resolution is always going to be negative so it basically says starting at the top left corner if I want to lay out the cells for each column I move 30 meters to the right because my unit here is meter so for each column I move, move 30 meters from this coordinate and for each row I move 30 meters from this coordinate okay so that's all that's saying uh, these zeros are just for uh, some skew things that we're never gonna have to worry about and are hardly ever used but it's just important to have it in there for special applications so um, so there's some important information about our raster. Those are probably the most important things that we're going to use. Okay. Um, I'm going to get, well, we'll leave these here now. So let's uh, just label this as print basic raster info. All right. And actually, let's go ahead and do one more thing here. So let's go print ds dot band count. So we want to get the number of raster bands this raster has. So let's click run. Oh, and I used the wrong call here. Let me just double check that for you. Okay, so I made a mistake here. This should be uh, raster count with no parentheses on it. And we're going to uh, number of raster bands so we know where this one is. So this will tell us basically the number of layers in the raster file. So let's go ahead and click run. There we go, we have one raster band. And this is going to be important for getting information about the bands. So, so far what we've done is we've created, created information about this raster. We haven't taken any data um, about, we haven't taken any information about the data in the raster, just about the raster in general. Its size, its projection, its geo transform, and the number of bands it has. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, print band info. So we're going to print raster band info. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, get the first raster band, ds.get raster band one. Okay. And so this will give us a raster band, which is going to be the actual um, it's going to have data about the actual. It's going to have information about the actual data in the raster. And so let's go print. Let's do band one dot no data value. Okay. And let's go ahead and click run. And I'm going to actually just label this no data value. Before I do that. All right. There we go. And let's actually do get no data value here and we'll click run and here's our no data value it's a really really big negative number negative three so it's basically negative three trillion a gazillion whatever you want to call it but three to the 38th power three times ten to the 38th power so that's a really really big number a really really small number because it's negative Okay, so that's how you get the no data value from your estimate. All right, so let's also get the minimum and maximum values. So we're going to do band1.get 
minimum, and we'll do the maximum, which is going to be max value band one dot get maximum, and then we'll do uh, data type band one open. This needs to be a period, not a decimal. It's going to be data. I'm just going to double check these functions for you, make sure I have these right, and then we'll come back and run it. Okay, and this should be, sorry, I messed this one up. This should be get unit type. And we can click run here, and we should get those popping up at the bottom. Let's click run. There we go, so there's no data value. We don't have a minimum value. We don't have a maximum value. And uh, it didn't give us a data type. And that could just be because we haven't calculated any statistics for this, um, and that's okay. But you can see that those are functions that we can, can call to get those things. And so in a future video, um, we'll work on how we can actually get these values calculated so they're associated with the raster file. And then once they're associated with the raster file, we can then query them. Um, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but we can take a look here and see. So I have just this DEM dot tif in my folder here. So down here I have another raster, I have this new raster tif, and then it has a new raster dot tif dot aux dot xml, okay? And you'll notice this was generated at a different time uh, than the raster file was. And this dem does not have an associated file with it. So generating that associated file, that often contains a lot of the raster statistics and information for the bands. And since we don't have that file here, it hasn't been generated, we're not able to query those, those values um, programmatically yet because they're just not there. Um, and that's okay, but this is just showing you the basics of how you can do this. If you have a raster on your system that has that .aux file, it might work out. We can actually try this here. I have no idea um, what that new raster file is, but if we run this, we might get some values. So let's go ahead and try it. So we'll click Run, and so you can see here, um, it doesn't have a no data value assigned, but it does have a minimum and maximum value assigned, and it's just zero. And like I said, I have no idea what that raster is. It might just be a, a fake one that I created for some purpose. Um, but you can see there that because it has that file associated, we've done that. And it could be that we just don't have um, a data type assigned to this raster at this time, and so that's why we're not getting it. But as you can see, that you can generate those files for the rasters and include those information. Okay, so that's kind of your basic introduction to GDAO. And um, coming back, we'll continue to get more into this, and we'll eventually get into doing some analysis with it and reading in those raster data. So thanks for watching. Hope this was useful. And if you have suggestions for, for things you want to cover in this video series, please let me know, um, and I'll try to get to them. Thanks for watching.